Good afternoon. My name is Jonathan Buick. I'm the President and CEO of Idaho Champion Gold, and I'd like to first start off by thanking Noble and Mark from Noble for the invitation I have the opportunity to come in and introduce Idaho Champion to you. Uh, we are OTC listed. Our ticker symbol is GLDRF, and our primary listing is in Canada with the ticker symbol ITKO. I for Idaho, TKO for Technical Knockout, of the Idaho Champion. And we have two gold projects in Idaho, which we'll be speaking to today. Forward-looking statement. I'm sure everybody has seen those, so I won't go through that. In addition to the forward-looking statement that's in this, on the screen, you may hear a teenager walk by at any given time because I'm doing this, this presentation today from home. So that's a, an additional forward-looking statement. So projects we're going to speak to today are the Banner Project and Champagne. Banner is a brand new discovery that we made in 2018. And the Champagne is a past producing open pit heap leach that Bima Gold had in production from 1989 to 1992. So those are the two projects that we'll be speaking to. And it's an exciting time to be talking about them because we just completed drill programs on both. And news flow has started to happen. We had our first press release with drill results from Champagne yesterday. But news will continue to flow in the days ahead. And if you are looking and considering an investment in, in the junior gold space, I'd highly recommend you add us to your radar list so you can continue to track our progress and check the boxes. I'm going to highlight a few things about Idaho, the company, and the projects before we go into a deeper dive on each of the projects. Idaho, now ranked as the eighth best jurisdiction in the world for uh, mining by the Fraser Institute, and third in North America. It now ranks all of Canada as a place to do business. Very supportive governor. Uh, it was uh, certainly an important last year during the COVID pandemic when a lot of our colleagues were told, tools down, go home. We were fortunate the governor deemed mining and exploration essential services, so we were able to stay busy and active in the field and busy and active, we very, we very much were. Uh, we increased our land package considerably at the Champagne, and we did three acquisitions and lease option where we now could control 10 square miles. So we're appreciative of the support of the governor and the various mining agencies within the state. Uh, I think it's an also an important thing to recognize that Idaho has become a very uh, hot jurisdiction in terms of people coming in and looking to do work. We've had over $220 million raised in Idaho in county year 2020. So there's lots of activity in the field, which has certainly caused a backlog at the labs, which I'll speak to as we go through the presentation as well. Also important to highlight management and ownership. We own about 32% of the company. That's all paid for stock. Uh, I'm the second largest shareholder. The largest shareholder is our chairman. Uh, we believe this is a wealth creating opportunity. Uh, we, we are locked up. We believe in the long-term health and, and su success of the company. Uh, as I've said to other investors previously, I'm not here for 10% return on my money. I'm here for 10 times my money, and I'm not afraid to say that. And we believe we have the team and the projects to do that. Again, I'm going to turn over our, 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 our start of the conversation to the banner, which is our new, uh, new discovery over near Elk City in, in uh, Idaho County. And then following that, I'll turn to the Champagne Project, which BEMA had in production. That's near Arco over in Butte County. Historic resource at Champagne that was mined, but there was a, we believe there's lots of ounces remaining. And that historic resource was 2.3 million tons at 1.2 grams gold equivalent. This is an important slide as an investor, and I wear my investor hat first and foremost because I'm an investor. And, and when I meet with companies and I talk about wh what's exciting about their project, the first two questions I want to know is, where's the closest gold mine and when was it last in production? Well, this slide tells me everything I need to know as that investor. So if you look at the Google Earth image on the left, you'll see uh, a number of known deposits to the north and then the banner discovery here. So we've got known gold deposits within this is the Oregon Shear Zone, which is a structure that goes through central Idaho that's a known gold hosting structure. And then you've got the Friday deposit five miles south of us. In April of last year, Ando Mines, which owns the Friday deposit, announced commercial production. So what that tells me as an investor is if we can prove up the, the ounces, build a resource, do the appropriate economic studies, environmental studies, permitting is possible. So we believe we have the opportunity to build a mine here as we deliver ounces through the drill bit and, and do the appropriate studies. If you look on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see the, the zoom in on our land package. The, the, the uh, dots to the bottom you see there are the discovery program of 2018. And then you see the drill pad locations for the program that we've just completed. So we started drilling in late August and completed that program in, in mid-November. Uh, we had set out to do 3,000 meters. Mother Nature brought winter in early, so we ended up doing about 2,200 meters uh, across 13 holes. Those assays are in the lab, and we're expecting to have those results in the, in the coming weeks. Uh, it's been a difficult time for, for us in the business, as all the juniors, financed as one last spring and summer, and it all went in the field together. Uh, and we saw a rush to field activity, which has caused a significant backlog and backup at the labs. I believe they're going to solve those challenges. Uh, but in addition to always being the last to believe in the sign curve of the metals and the slow to staff up normally, the addition of COVID not being able to run the labs 24-7 or have full staffing in the labs when they are operating has caused a, a significant delay in, in turnaround time. 
But that banner, our discovery zone from 2018 is 500 meters north-south by 200 meters east-west. Uh, we've extended that discovery zone through the drill bit that we've just completed. The, the, the rock looks similar to 2018, but without having the assays, I can't speak to what those numbers look like, but certainly confident that we'll continue to see abscess. This was an oxide discovery, uh, and, and that was all the, all the, in, the, uh, the intervals were in the top 125 meters. So we're excited about where we are in terms of the opportunity to grow that, that, that discovery zone. We have another 2.7 kilometers of strike to the north of that discovery zone, and that's where we were focusing our efforts this year. I'm now going to turn our attention over to the Champagne project. This is the project that BEMA had in production previously. This is a picture in the backdrop of the open pit where you see that BEMA operated there 89 to 92. They averaged about 25,000 ounces a year out of there. It was an oxide deposit. Uh, they never drilled below 100 meters. So we see a significant opportunity at Champaign. Uh, we started our drill program there also in late August. I should also say that we raised $8.1 million on July 31st with a bot deal prospectus offering. Uh, we had 14 institutions participate. Uh, that was done at 30 cents Canadian. Uh, so we're trading at a discount to that share price currently. And I think a lot of that's the lag time from drill results waiting for the markets getting impatient uh, and a softening gold market the first three weeks of, of uh, January of this year. But we, we think with good news flow, we'll see the stock price appreciate. So we do have money in the treasury. Uh, as, we, as we finished the calendar year 2020, we had about three and a half million Canadians still in the bank. We still have the cost of labs and things, so we'll end up probably in it just under $3 million post this program. So certainly funded for the first phase of our programs. Uh, we will commence at Champaign late March. We'll be back out drilling in the field late March. Um, in this slide, this is also an important slide, and if you look, you see the teal blue, which was our original land package that we staked in 2018, and that was in February of 2018. This was open ground. We went and staked it ourselves. Uh, we then approached Kinross to get the data. Typical big gold company had no idea what we were talking about. It took them nine months to come back and say, yeah, you're right, we have the data. We then danced back and forth through 2019 negotiating the price. We bought that data in March of last year. Once we got the data, our geologists started pounding the table. This, this is a, a world-class district. It's not a project. We need to go get more ground. And we were fortunate, as I said, the governor allowed us to, to stay active in the field. So the royal blue that you see around the teal was the additional 182 claims that we staked in the spring of 2020. So we now control 10 square miles. At the same time, we consolidated the camp within the teal blue. So where you see what looks like a peanut shell or a footprint was the outline of the past producing open pit. This was in patented ground. Patented ground is the best ground you can have in the U.S. That's that the, the only permit you need on patented ground is water reclamation. So what that did was we, we bought that in March from a family trust. We immediately were able to go in and be active on the project. So our, our drill program that we've just completed we did six RC, six, five RC holes and seven core holes. We started with an RC program and then supplemented by bringing in two core holes. We were immediately active on the patent ground and are in the process of submitting an application for the BLM ground, which is our, the, the additional 10 square miles. So our patent ground is 87 acres. So the whole focus of the program last year with the drill bit was tied to that 87 acres. The coming program will include our BLM land package. We'll be stepping out and drilling across the larger land package. So it's an exciting time for us. The goal of the drill program was to first see how much of that oxide cap is remaining. The other aspect of the program was, and what's happening at depth? FEMA never drilled below 100 meters. And all their drill holes were 100 meters or less. So our, our drill program that we've completed, we were trying to target and reach uh, a significant depth and see if we could touch an ore body. We may not do that on this first pass, but we're confident that between the drill program results and as we get that information back, but also the IP program, where we shot six lines across the lower part of the property between the IP soils geochem and the drill results, we'll come back with very fine-tuned drill targets across the larger land package. We anticipate having the IP and the IP information available to us in the next week. And based on the first couple of views we've had on the IP, we see a, a, a hum humongous opportunity. What we did at Champaign, which is I think unique to us, because it's a project that we had never been on the ground, this was our first time getting our fingernails dirty, was we called on our geologic Rolodex of, Rolodex of experts. So we had a bunch of different types of geologists come through, spend seven to 10 days at the project. You know, a structural geologist, an epithermal geologist, or a genetic geologist all come out, boots on the ground, hammer in hand, do some mentoring of our junior geos, spend a week in, in the field, come back, give us what their impressions are, what they think is happening at depth. So we've had that happen. We've got a bunch of the, the information in, quite exciting. We've had a former senior person from Newmont came out, spent a week there. They came back and said, you got a tiger by the tail. This is a big company project. 
you need to treat it with respect. So they get that type of feedback was certainly encouraging for us. And we're, we've taken a methodical approach about how we're going to come in in the 2021 and the program that we're going to do. We're going to come back. We're going to shoot more IP. We see a reason to come continue with that IP to the north. We've got the drill permit application. We, we, we geologically believe we're sitting in a collapse called there as a part of a bigger porphyry structure. So we're going to fence drill along that IP anomaly, uh, stepping outside of the, the, the patent ground. We're going to also continue to drill the patent ground. The five RC holes, we announced the press release yesterday with those results. Uh, certainly was encouraging for us. We see oxide cap remaining. We had a 31 meter interval, similar grade to what BEMA mined. And you see the historic resource at BEMA was 2.3 million tons at 1.2 grams gold equivalent. We had a 16 and a half meter interval at 1.34 gold equivalent. So certainly in line with what they were mining back when gold prices and silver prices were much cheaper. Uh, we see breccias to the west uh, off the patent ground that are going to continue to be a part of our targets. But certainly uh, it's going to be busy 2021 in terms of our field program there. If you look at the bottom right of the slide, you'll see uh, an outline of, and map of the Moran Tunnel. That's a tunnel that was put in back in the 1920s and 30s. And what was interesting for our, our geologic team was seeing all the different zones and loads. So there's a zinc load, there's a copper load, there's a bismuth load, uh, there, there's a spar load, uh, there's a huge silver zone. So with our drilling and the RC holes, we were looking at working around the open pit opportunity, but with the core holes, we've come in, we're drilling five, uh, 400 meter, 500 meter holes, seeing if we can touch that ore body or at least understand what's happening at depth. So it's going to be an interesting uh, information download as those results come back from the lab in terms of what that means for our understanding. Uh, we bulked up our geologic team. You'll see press releases coming in, in the near term. We just brought on a, a new chief geologist who's going to be focused at Champaign. Our, our, our project in 2021, uh, was highlighted where we split our money equally across both properties. We think they're both uh, world-class opportunities, so we're spending equally. As we get the results back, that'll dictate where we turn our priority. So when you see the slide presentation today, we started with Banner and then following with Champagne, we've done that alphabetically. As we move forward and get all those results back, we'll, we may just change this, the, the sequence of which project we speak to first based on how, how we see uh, the geologic unfold in front of us. Here is just a highlight of the open pit. You can see the patented ground in, in, in the peach color and all the historic drilling that was done by BEMA and the outline of the footprint. And that's where we spent our, our, our sea holes there. But we've also gone to the north end of the patents, focused to try to touch across to some of the historic operations. There's five other historic mines within our BLM ground, the Ella, the Reliance, the St. Louis. Uh, those are targets that were mined uh, back in the 30s and 40s. At one time, Champaign uh, was a community of about 400 people that lived off of the project. Uh, prior to the BEMA coming in back in the 80s. So this is an opportunity that's seen significant work at surface, but never at depth. It had never had IP done. It had never had a regional program put together. So that's what we've done. And we've really started to build up our IP around the project. So this is a slide I think is important. This is what I would like to refer to as our report card. These are all the things we say we're going to do. And you can see we've started to check those boxes. We've, we've accomplished a lot in 2020. We'll be updating with a 2021 slide here in the next couple of weeks once we get all the data back from the programs, as I say, from the labs. But this is the things that we want to be held accountable to. It's important for us to be available and accessible to our shareholders, any potential investor. You'll see that we've, in addition to the presentation on our website, we've got uh, uh, all our contact information. We've got a presentation that's more robust than the one I'm giving today. Today's only an 11-slide presentation, but we've got a, a much deeper dive presentation on the website. We've also created a YouTube channel. Uh, at the end of the presentation, while we're doing q and I'm going to put up some drone footage. One of our geologists is a, a, a drone pilot, so we've been flying drone footage of each of the projects so people can understand where our use of proceeds is. How are we advancing the asset? How are we moving the project forward? We believe both Banner and Champagne need to be treated with respect, and if we do it the right way, we can lead both projects to a mining decision. We're in a great jurisdiction with two projects that warrant additional spend and see what we can move in terms of uh, developing and, and, and building out a resource. In terms of capital structure, we have about 93 million shares outstanding. As I said, Manjit owns about 32% of that. And again, all paid for stock. We're aligned with our shareholders. We're there for the long term. This is a wealth creating opportunity. We believe wealth starts now. Drill, drill results are start, just started to come. There's going to be continued news flow out of the program for 2020, but an additional program immediately starting in, in, in late March in 2021. So the news flow will be continuous throughout the calendar year. Uh, and we believe we have the right team in place to do that as a team. Bruce, myself, and Paul are Toronto-based. Greg and Patrick are my U.S. directors. Both Greg and Patrick are geologists. Greg is a resident of Idaho. He's based in Sandpoint, Idaho. Greg has been my right hand 
I can't imagine where we'd be over the last 12 months without him. Obviously, I was limited to be able to travel and not get into Idaho. Greg managed to put together the programs, build out the geologic team in two different remote parts of the state, manage the government agencies. He's been instrumental to our success, uh, and, and uh, he and I talk multiple times a day. Patrick is our most recent appointment. He just came back from a stint with Fortescue in Australia. The reason I asked Patrick to join the board was he was at Newmont, and while he was at Newmont, he was responsible for joint ventures in the juniors. So he knows what a big company is looking for. He knows how and what type of projects they want to invest in. So I've asked Patrick to take on the, the responsibility of managing our data. How do we present the information? How do we compile the information? How do we make it so it's not foreign or unfamiliar to a, to a potential partner or a potential takeout candidate? As I said at the outset in, a, in the middle of the presentation, we believe we have two projects that are worthy of de delivering to a, a mining decision, and we think we have the, the, the team to do that, and, and Patrick is going to help us steward that data flow and information as we go to, uh, to the end of the days ahead. So in summation, Idaho Champion aligned with our shareholders with strategic management ownership. We continue to, to, to purchase stock. We're funded through our 2021 first phase of the program. We have what we believe is multi-million ounce opportunity at Banner and at Champaign. We believe there's an opportunity to touch an ore body at Champaign this calendar year in a great jurisdiction where you've got a very supportive governor and governments uh, with, with a jurisdiction that continues to bode well. Sitting right below Idaho is Nevada. Everybody sees that as the gold standard for jurisdictions. It's a, it's a man-made border. The geology does not stop at the border. Idaho is minerally endowed, and we believe it's, it's going to continue to sh uh, place well and shine well, uh, and, it's, and we think it's the right place to be working, and that's, that's where we're going to continue our focus. So at this point, I'm going to just turn over the floor to questions. In the presentation, you'll see that's my, that's my mobile number. Again, it's about availability and accountability. I, 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 my goal out of doing this conference was to get on your, your radar, your watch list, and hopefully the next time we speak, I can welcome you as a shareholder and partner. So while, while we do the Q&A, and I'll turn the, the questions over to Mark, I'm going to switch screens so I can put up a drone video and have the opportunity to take some questions while you can see what's happening at the project. Well, thank you, Jonathan. Uh, I'm Mark Reichman, the Senior Research Analyst who covers the metals and mining sector for Noble Capital Markets. Uh, as a reminder to our viewers, if you have a question, please click on the icon in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen and type in your question. So the first question is really asking about the assay results uh, for Banner. Um, Essentially, you know, you did 2,200 meters of drilling, 13 holes. Does the lab still have all the results, or are you are you just holding the results to to re, you know to release the results in in a full batch? No, the lab has everything. We we are still waiting. We are challenged like everybody else uh, because of the delays. They're uh, they're having difficulty getting staffing, and so we we have not received any. We're we're, we're in queue. So, but based so on where we are right now in the conversation, we've been speaking to them at some weeks daily, but most of the time weekly. Uh, we expect to see that. I, I would, if we don't have results up by the middle of February, I'm going to go build my own lab. It's been really frustrating. <laughs> well, it makes it hard to plan your, your 2021 program. Well, it's, and it's also uh, shortened our, our 2020 program because we didn't want to be drilling blindly and wasting money either. Right. So it, it's been a challenge for all of us. I think the reality is, a lot of companies that all got funded at once will not necessarily get the results that allows them to get that next tranche of funding. So the labs won't be as busy first because there won't be as many companies drilling. Mm -hmm. uh, but also I think they've been able to figure out how to, how to bulk up and staff up. I said to a couple of them, like we use three different labs, I said, you know, if the challenge is, is pay, yeah, I had 10 bucks an hour. Like the people, it's a pass through us anyway. We're happy to pay that if it gets us data faster. No, it's it's a flow through for 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 cost. It's not like they're having to eat that. That's that's the the client has to pay for that. But right. we anticipate seeing banner results uh, in the next two weeks, three weeks tops, based on what okay. they've told us. And then in on in Champagne, um, you know, you did the five RC holes and seven uh, core holes. I, the results were out, uh, I think, on three of them on the nineteenth. So how how many results remain to to be released there? So we the, the we put the RC holes out uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, the core holes I would anticipate having that in the next two weeks would be my expectation, just based on the fact that they've already started sending us invoices for processing. That means we've left the loading dock and we're now in the building mm -hmm. uh, at the lab. So I would anticipate having the core holes in the next two weeks. We should have our geophysics report from the IP program probably in the next 
seven to 10 days as well. So we'll st really start to be able to show the market the opportunity. Uh, and yeah, is the IP survey that's already been completed? They, sh they shot the lines in November, first week of December, and then they left to do another job. So we've had, a, they've shot, shown us a couple of lines, but we haven't got the full report yet. So we expect to get that, I, man, I would love to have it by the end of this week to be able to put that out next week. Uh, but I, I, again, I'm, I'm vulnerable to other like third party uh, right. timelines. I can't control the timeline, but if it was up to me, we, we would already have it. And then there's a question asking about uh, uh, when you'll, you'll submit your, your drill permit application. And then another question on the uh, BLM uh, application. Okay, so we are still permitted at Banner. Our, our permit will carry across uh, from 2020. Uh, so we, we don't need to make any, any additional permit applications at Banner unless we want to choose to move to a different area of the property. At Champaign, the BL, BLM permit will get submitted. We're, we have a big geologic powwow uh, February 1st in Idaho with our team. We're bringing them all back. Some of them are, have gone home for, for the holidays and now they're, they're working remotely. Uh, we'll have that first week of budget and, and with the expectation we'll have the IP and, and the core holes back by then so we can really submit uh, the targets. We've got some really nice targets already uh, showing to us from our field work and, and the grassroots exploration that was a part of that. Uh, the BLM timeline around a drill permit is 60 to 90 days. We went ahead of our, we tried to move ahead of that timeline by having two of the BLM members out to the property while we were drilling just to show them that we were good stewards to the property and, 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 and running the, the drill program in the proper way. We think that's going to shorten the duration to get that permit. But at the same time, we can still drill on our on our private ground while we wait for that BLM permit. So we can still get in there late March and be active in the field waiting if we haven't got it by then to, to, to know that it's about to happen. Uh, and everything tells us it will, it's a just a matter of the process to get that permit. And then, and, uh, you know, obviously you're still awaiting uh, some results, but you have kind of a, an idea on, on spending for next year and, 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 and funding. Uh, so we, we have, we're fortunate we have $4 million in the money warrants currently that we could call. Uh, obviously everybody's waiting to see the drill results before they want to, you know, ante up for, for, for that. But we, so we exited 2020 with 3 million Canadian. Uh, I, by the time we pay the labs and, and finish off paying the final aspects of 2020, maybe we're 2.7 million Canadian. Um, so what we're going to be doing that first week of February is planning our budget and spend. At Champaign, we can start earlier. It's a, it's we can get 12 month access there. We're at Banner because of snowfall. We we typically don't go in there till late May, early June anyway. So what we'll be doing is our our first part of the spend will be at Champaign, uh, and then but we're putting budgets together for both programs. So I I would anticipate uh, being able to come out with a press release to the market with our planned budget and and, and program uh, in mid-February for what, what our shareholders and investors can expect in terms of activity in the field. But just as, before the next question, just as you see, you can see the open pit. They barely touch the surface. So this flyby and fly around, you can see the different drill rigs. Uh, as I like to say, those that's where wealth is created when that drill bit's turning. But that they, the, 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 the at surface operations, they, they mine to 35 meters for the majority of that pit. So there's a huge opportunity in and around that pit that we're excited to, to continue to uh, geologically understand through the drill program. I see. Well, Jonathan, I think that's about all the time we have. We really appreciate you joining us. Well, Mark, I thank you again for the opportunity to, to present and for uh, the, the, the viewers today. I, I look forward to having a chance to communicate one-on-one -on -one and, 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 and expand on, as we bring out the drill results and people are looking for an explanation as to the impact and what that means for the company and the projects. We're always available and it's about being accountable to our shareholders. Uh, and participating in conferences such like such as this to 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 be made uh, aware, available and aware to other investors who are looking for for companies that they think they can uh, add to their portfolio. We we believe that that now is the time to consider Idaho Champion as an investment, and we believe that the news to come will will, will justify the uh, the participation in the market. So thank you again, uh, and look forward to the the opportunity to continue our conversation with Noble as well in the days ahead.